Hi everyone, this is Kathy Skipper and this is the check-in for day four of my healing sugar addiction journey. So first of all, I just wanted to say um, hello and um, it's great that lots of people messaged me and wrote comments that they're going to be doing this journey too. So I wanted to honour that and say the more the merrier. <laughs> Um, we can support each other and really do comment on the videos and share what you're feeling, share what you your insights are, what you found out, because I think creating a supportive community around this um, is going to help everyone. So to begin with, I just wanted to talk a little bit about practical things that came up for me yesterday, because um, it's the morning now. So although it's the check in for day four, it's the beginning of, of day four. So yesterday... Um, I decided around 10 o'clock to have some breakfast and I um, went and got the bread that Florian had bought at Trader Joe's which is out of the fridge which is organic super bread and it's full of seeds you can actually see the seeds it's a sort of whole wheat uh, pumpkin seeds flax seeds sunflower seeds carrots um, and so I had the the instinct to look at the um, ingredients before I put it in the toaster and as I read down, I saw um, organic sugar. So it's not high on the list, but it's still an added uh, ingredient. And um, there's organic dried apple. But as you know, and I did say in my intentions and motivations that I didn't want to be eating dried fruit at the moment because of the concentration of sugar and there's added sugar so I thought wow you know it's meant to look so healthy um, and it's organic but it's got added sugar in it so when I went to our local health food shop yesterday evening I bought some locally made bread uh, called wild leaven it's quinoa and sunflower and I was careful to check on the ingredients and there was zero uh, sugars so that's what I'm going to be eating in terms of my toast this morning I don't want to eat a lot of gluten but I'm one thing at a time sugar and alcohol is already huge so um, I don't want to stop everything at the same time because I won't make it otherwise the other thing that happened in terms of labels was we sat down last night to eat supper and um, I'd made a big salad with lots of lovely greens and I put the olive oil and the balsamic vinegar on the table with other condiments um, so people could choose what they put on their salad and as I and I didn't look at the label I just didn't think about it and I poured the vinegar you know over drizzled it over my salad and I could feel the, sh the sweetness again another sign excuse me Max thank you stop I could, sorry about that, I could feel the, the sugar, I could taste the sugar, which is another sign that my taste buds are sort of waking up to natural sugars or, well, what I thought were natural sugars. Anyway, I decided to look at the label and this big bottle of um, balsamic vinegar has 67 servings in it and the, um, the ingredients are per serving. So there's... Um, 45 calories per serving and then I look down and there's nine grams including six grams of added sugars so suddenly I thought shit and I have looked you know before I gave up um or started this journey of um giving up sugar I did sometimes look at the labels for example last week we were in the local health food shop we were near the cash register and I glanced over and there was this CBD ginger drink and I thought wow I'll try that you know it was the end of the day wanted something and so I didn't think about it sat in the car drank it started to drink it then looked at the label and the the ingredients were 26 grams of sugar in a small can like a you know of this drink and if you think four grams is um more or less teaspoon depending on the teaspoon but four grams equals a teaspoon of sugar so 26 divided by four is um how many three uh four twelve twenty four twenty four is six so it's over six grams of sugar uh, six sorry six teaspoons of sugar in that small can i mean i put it away even before i started this um sugar journey so all that to say and this so then getting back to the vinegar so then i looked at the ingredients and the ingredients are organic cooked grape must 
and organic wine vinegar. So the added sugar must be from the grape must, which is sort of really grape juice that's been condensed, cooked, cooked, cooked into like a syrup, which is basically what balsamic vinegar is. Um, so I was stupid in a way, not thinking about it beforehand. But I decided I don't want to have that on my salad at the moment because it is very sweet and it is full of, even though they might be natural sugars, they're fruit sugar that's very much like the um, dried fruit. So I've decided to replace it with the ume plum vinegar, which when I look on the ingredients has zero sugars. Okay, so that was just on a practical level, learning about um, what are, what are in products and and learning to look at the label. Um, other practical thing was Florian made me my little bag. Um, it doesn't close very well, I might have to put a little button, but it's great for keeping the oils on me because I've really found that the oils are a superb support in this journey. And um, so I wouldn't want to be without them. And I don't want to have to think, oh, I've got to go and get an oil from my box or from by my bed or on my desk. I like to have the ones that I'm working with on me so I can just um, pull them out wherever I am, even if I'm not at home. And this leads me on to another thought that I had, and I think it's important on this journey. And years ago, when I was 17, 18, I got into the runes, which are a sort of ancient um, Nordic alphabet that have a divinatory aspect to them. And there's a guy called Ralph Blum who wrote this very mainstream book about the runes that I had. And it was a good book, and each rune he explained. And I remember a phrase in one of the runes, which was, um, once you've made the decision about something in your life, the universe will support you in that decision. If you don't make the decision and you wait for something to happen, well, the universe can't support you. It can only really support you when you've made the decision. And what I've noticed, because this, you know, from age 17, this um, phrase stuck in my mind is that you have to really make the decision. It's not good enough to make a half-hearted decision, a maybe, or I'll try, I'll try. That's not good enough. The universe doesn't recognize that as a proper decision. We have to really, commit and be determined and say this is what I want and this is the decision I'm making. It doesn't mean there won't be moments in that journey where we um, trip up and where we binge on sugar or whatever it is um, that the decision's about but making that decision is extremely important so the universe can com come in and support you and so I noticed that the universe was supporting me. One in the fact that I feel like I've got a lot of determination and energy for this journey and that the universe is kind of guiding me towards the things that are going to be useful and it did this last night because just before going to bed I had been working all day in Kathy's, Kathy's attars and um, we've received a new green myrtle from France and it's really beautiful. I bottled it and I love the colour. It's like this deep yellow golden colour. And they were all, they hadn't been labelled yet. They were all in this box. And I was, as I was going to bed, I was attracted by the colour and pulled towards the myrtle. So I took a bottle and I took it up to bed and actually spilt it this morning. So my bottle isn't full anymore. But um, I adored the smell. It was like it suddenly calmed me. I felt relaxed and balanced. And usually when I go to bed is when I stop my busyness in the day. And that's when some emotions from this sugar journey might come up, um, whatever it is. But this really stopped my mind from ticking over and led me into this very balanced, calm place. So I started to work with it. And I realised that... Um, it was really showing me a path as if the path up till now with sugar had been like a dead end. I felt it opening. I felt like the myrtle was showing me the path is open. You're on it. You can do this. You've got this. And so I started to research some of my uh, French aromatherapy books that have some of the energetic uses of oils. And to my surprise, the synchronicity was that what I read is that Myrtle has been used in France um, for working with dependencies, with alcohol, um, tobacco, other addictions. So what was written is that what Myrtle does is that that self 
self-depreciating and more than self-depreciating, self-harming in a way, which is what addiction is, because there's a part of us that goes and does something that another part of us doesn't want to do and knows it's not good for us. And, and the part that does it takes control and the conscious part that doesn't want to do it sort of loses control. And there's a, a, a sense of doing something that's bad for us. We're, we're hurting ourselves. Um, and so I thought that was great. You know, I, Myrtle called me and it really is a, a plant that's already used for um, addictions. And there was another synchronicity. Yes, that's it. It was, um, it's also used for the thyroid. And just a little drop here on the finger and then tap in the area at the bottom of the throat. And I started to do it. And I realized that in a way, yes, I've decided to do this sugar journey because I have had um, tests that show that I'm hyperthyroid and I want to take handle of my health. But also the link between the thyroid and self-harming or doing things that aren't good for us, um, I think is very close. And, and, you know, the thyroid is at the chakra of the gall, of the throat. So there's the idea of what do I want to bring in the world through my breath, through my words? And is it coherent? Does it align with my actions? And all this, you know, I'm still working on it. It only happened last night. Um, but I just feel very grateful that the right oil showed itself. It's like I, I didn't need to think about it. It's not my intellect that's going to find the right thing for me at the right moment. It's by allowing something greater than me to come through and guide me. And that's where I think once you make the decision to do something, the universe does support you. So for all of you, you know, lots of people have messaged, as I said, and are kind of either on this journey already or, or have decided to do this journey with me. So I think today my takeaway is really think about how you're making the decision to do this. Are you just doing it sort of haphazardly, a little lightly, or are you really, really committed to this? And if so, you could even do a little ritual of commitment, of opening the doorway, the portal to the next uh, few months of this journey as really a journey, a path, an exciting path. What are you going to find on this path? How is it going to change you? What are the emotions that have been repressed since probably childhood and beyond, even generational, that are going to come through and finally be integrated? Who are the connections you're going to make through this journey? What is the new information that's going to come up? How are you going to implement it into your life? So making that decision and being excited about it and determined about it, however hard there are going to be moments that are going to be difficult, I think is really, really important. And then once you've made that and you've really anchored that decision, have a look, notice, just allow. In fact, it's not even have a look, it's allow the universe to come forward and support you and lead you down um, the paths that you need to go down that are going to help you with this. So lastly, the other thing was that... At night, I'm having difficulty sleeping. Excuse me. I'm having difficulty sleeping because um, I think that hypothyroidism and, um, yeah, not having a glass of wine maybe in the evening. But what was interesting is before I actually picked the myrtle, I took um, rum and chamomile with me because I, I thought I wanted to add it to my bag because it's very, very calming. Um, they actually use it in France as a pre-anesthetic. So when someone's going to have an operation, they will use it to calm the person on a deep level, not just calm their anxieties, but really calm the whole organism and the whole being ready for anesthesia. So it's like a pre-anesthesia. It gets you into a place where you're able to receive um, the next stage in, in, in the um, journey of, of your operation if you're having an anesthesia. Um, so I took this to bed. And I thought, well, this will help because it's going to help me sleep and I want to keep it in my bag but for those moments where, you know, yes, I, I have been very lucky so far and I know it's going to come. I have had a few moments where I think I really want something sugary and I have just slowed down enough. This And this is where I think the chamomile will really help to slow down enough to not be reactive because I think what happens with addiction is we get, it's like a micro stimulus 
of what the of the addiction calling so for me i want sugar or i want that glass of red wine it's a micro stimulus it's a feeling a sort of sensation deep within and before we even allow that sensation to fully manifest we're already reaching for the chocolate or reaching for the glass of wine so i think the, the roman chamomile will help to slow that down so when i feel that anxiety because it's it's an anxiety because it's a it's a a conflict between this desire that's coming up this feeling this stimulus and my true desire which is that i don't want to go down that path and i think what we need is enough space we need to sort of expand and open up and slow down slowing down is really really important for us to be able to one allow the feeling to come through and see what that feeling really is not just the stimulus but the feeling behind the, the stimulus i also make sure when i'm slowed down enough that i notice what was it that triggered that feeling what was happening what was i thinking what was i doing because all this information is going to be helpful as we go along this path and i think the roman chamomile really helps us to do that to really um slow down Get out of that nervous, I, shit, I'm going to eat the chocolate and then it's all buggered um, feeling. So I took this up with me and that's when I started to discover the myrtle. And they, they both go actually really beautifully together and both have a very calming, anti-anxiety, um, balancing energy to them. So you could use them both or just one. Um, in a way, maybe the myrtle would be better in the day and the chamomile because it is so um, extremely calming at night. Or we could use them both at night. <coughs> anyway, I'm going to go to the dogs, please. My dogs are, uh, uh, playing up some things around. So, um, well, lots of love and leave your comments below and um, I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.